is a board at the back. If you want to fill it in, you're more than welcome. And for everybody else, please join us for coffee. Jock, please just walk around. Join us for coffee afterwards. Okay. You can have some tea too. You know? Remember in the army when it was very hot, they gave you, gave you very hot tea to drink. You know? And that cools you down. Don't forget your army days. You went through training. Yeah. I was there. You was there. I was <laughs> This morning's message, um, like you know, we're working through Matthew. And, and we're going to go to the book of Hebrews. And we're doing the launch, your 2025. We still need people to say, listen, I want to be part of your launch team. Still need people to say, listen, I want to be part of your launch team. If you're interested in being part of the launch team, just put up your hands. Okay, afterwards, afterwards. Just go to Sari. Sari, what's this launch team? I want to be part of the launch team. Okay, we, we're launching your 2025. We're crossing over from 2024 to 2025. And I'm very excited. I believe the Lord has shared this with us, with me, to share with you guys this whole year already. All right, Matthew 27. And we are reading from verse 15. So I just want to bring you up to speed. Jesus is now being accused. They've caught him. And they've got him there with Pontius Pilate. And he lets people go free. He lets, he lets one criminal go free every year. Just to get the people's morale up, you know. Because he's playing a political game. And he needs to... Make sure that the Jews don't rebel and that Caesar is all happy and he's in a very tight space, a difficult space in his own life. And the title of this message is Son of Abba versus the Messiah. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. And we're starting off in verse 15. Let's make sure I'm in the right place. Yes. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to them a mul to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. Are you seeing that? Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas. Or Jesus who is called the Christ. For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, Have nothing to do with this man, just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Jesus Barabbas and to destroy Jesus, the Messiah. Pilate said to him, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? And they all said to him, Let him be crucified. Then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Now I can guarantee you, you have never read this. That Barabbas' full name is Jesus Baraba. If you go into the language, the Greek language, and I, and I can put it up for you, but it's just little stripes and it, it means nothing. It's Greek to us. Okay? <laughs> but the Greek scholars show you, and if you sit down, and I'm not a Greek student, but you show you, Little by little, what it's written there and how it's written. There were manuscripts of Matthew's gospel that had his full name in, Jesus Bar Abba. And there were many, half the manuscripts didn't have it in. That's the thing about it. There's copies that made and then they leave it out. And the reason why the later translations, the later church started to leave out Jesus as part of the name of Barabbas, is to stop confusion. Because when you read it like that, you say Jesus Barabbas and Jesus the Messiah, you, now suddenly you can be all confused. So they wanted to make it easy for us. 
They're not hiding it. They're not changing the, the translations or changing the Bible. That was there by people that want the best for the body of Christ. And they say, we can leave that out. And many of the translations are putting it back. Many of the translations are putting asterisks and right at the bottom saying exactly what I'm telling you now. That his full name is Jesus Bar in the language means son of Abba. That's the combination of Barabbas' name. Jesus, son of Abba. Versus Jesus, who is called the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one. It means the Messiah, the one that is going to do the work on the cross. The one that's going to change things. And the crowd is asking, because they know what his name means. But I want you to see that he's a notorious criminal. Just for one second, think of a notorious criminal in your own life. Somebody that might have robbed you. Or your family have broken into your house. Whose house has been broken into before? Nice feeling when you see that guy. Eh? There's a nice feeling. You, 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 know, you get rather... Or a guy that swears at you in the street, a notorious criminal. You must treat him with all the love that you can. No. Section 5 love. There's, if we think of a criminal, a notorious criminal, somebody that makes our lives bad, that might have robbed you, might have had, held you up. Who's held up, been held up with gunpoint? This is South Africa. You can put up your hands. Okay, there's a couple. I'm not alone. You know? You've been mugged, been robbed. Your stuff has been robbed. In our being, and we can be genuine with one another, the only thing we want for that person is what? Let's call it justice. Eh? Can we, we call it justice. But actually, we still think completely different. Throw him in the back of a van and go drive with him. Now, make sure when he gets out, <laughs> There's some guys that know what I'm talking about. Shh, you're <laughs> Okay. So, Barabbas, this guy's a notorious criminal, and everybody knows he's a criminal. No one likes him. No one loves him. No one really wants this guy. He's a notorious criminal. Who's been on the end of rejection? Who's been rejected before in their lives? Who's been told how bad you are over and over by? Sometimes loved ones. If you're married, you've got to put up your hand. Because <laughs> we all go through that. Ne? I'm just joking. <laughs> but we've all been on this place. What happens with the fire inside of you? When you're in that fight, when you're in that place of being rejected and abandoned and ostracized and pushed away, the fire inside of you goes down. It quenches. Some people want a fire started with some stuff that's got other methods of burning inside it in a liquid form just to put some life back, you know. They want to... Jock knows what I'm talking about. Other people say, let me add some smoke to the fire. <laughs> because there are rookies. <laughs> they want to get this artificial fire going. Barabbas is a notorious criminal. The whole society, the whole society has pushed him out. They're out there. How much fire is left in him? How much life, zest for life, hope is left in Barabbas? Nothing. Walker, you're talking a lot about this Barabbas guy. Yeah. This son. They're accusing Jesus, the Messiah, the whole time. What does he do being falsely accused? He keeps quiet. So much so that the judge, which is the governor, is astonished. He's like, are oh, you not going to say anything? Are you not going to defend yourself? And you know, when we are right and other people are wrong, that's exactly what happens, eh? 
we pull our necks and we, hey, 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 whoa, whoa. We start defending ourselves. We start defending ourselves. Jesus does not defend himself. He's allowing the Father's will to happen. He understands that this man, this Barabbas, is broken covenant. He's outside of God's protection. He understands this man is full of sin. He understands that this man's fire is almost out. I want to read for you Matthew 12, verse 18, which is Isaiah 42 quoted. Matthew 12, verse 18. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. Till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. You see, the crowd calls for a Jesus of this world. His name is Jesus Barabbas, son of Abba. They know what he means. But Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, is looking at this earthly Barabbas. I say, so his fire is going out. His fire is dying. He's... There's no life left in him. And when I say that, immediately John 10 comes to my heart. That Jesus says, the thief came to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I came to give you life, life in abundance. Barabbas represents us. Sinners. People that have broken God's covenant. And every time we do that, it, the enemy steals a little bit of life from us, a little bit of fire from us, a little bit of freedom from us, a little bit of zest from us, a little bit of boldness from us. And Jesus is saying, let him go free. I will not put out his fire. I will take his blame. I will become the prisoner that he is. I'll become that prisoner. The sin that he has, I'll take that on me. You see, what the Jesus of this world does is judgmental. Many Christians represent the father completely wrong by saying this Bible is for me to chop you down to size. But the Bible says this. Let me give you a hiding, Wayne. But the Jesus of the Bible will not put out that fire. The Jesus of the Bible, when that reed is bent, picks it up. You see, all of us, all of us have been this notorious sinner. Just ask your spouse. Just ask your children. Just ask your parents. Just ask this traffic officer. All of us have been this notorious sinner. Jesus says, I will not quench your fire. I'll take your sin and put it on me. And my word, Hebrew says, this word is life-giving and it's energizing and it's vitalizing. 
it brings life. It energizes you. It gives you purpose. It helps you deal with your past. I don't care if your past is 10 minutes ago. It helps you deal with your past. And your past can be prenatal. It helps you deal with your past. And maybe you've been rejected as long as you've known you've been rejected. Jesus deals with that. And maybe you have been aggressive since you were two years old. Jesus can deal with that. And maybe you've never felt good enough. You've always felt not good enough, even from a baby. Jesus deals with that. He says, that fire, that little bit that's in you, I will not put out. I will raise you up. You see, here's the beauty of what fire does. Who's been camping? Who's done camping before? Not glamping, camping. Who likes Bosfeld fire? All right. Mm, 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 mm. And the next morning you wake up and this it's still smoldering. You take a bucket of water and put it out, eh? No, that's the last thing you do. Why? Because the potential that is inside those little coals, that's smoking, there's potential there, Dwayne. Right? So what do you do? You get a couple of t- tweaks and you pop, and then you get the kettle and you put it on, and suddenly we've got fire. Nothing better than taking an old piece of steak from last night and warming it up right there. Mm-hmm, now we're talking there. Nah. Camping chair, coffee, with the oh, sticky steak. Oh, beautiful. You see, because there's potential in there. Jesus sees the potential in you. And you might say, but I'm just <sighs> smoldering. I feel like I'm dying. You don't know where I am. You don't understand all the ash that's on top of me. You don't know the weight that I'm carrying. Jesus knows, and He breathes life into that. He breathes life into that. If you and I would open up, if we would take this educated idiot box, okay? That's what Fani calls it. The educated idiot box. You take this thing, and you put it aside, and say, I'm going to stop being so... Logos orientated. I'm going to be stop being so intelligent. I'm going to open my heart for once. Just open your heart for once. He comes and blows his spirit in there. And that fire starts to standing up. He said, but you don't know what I have done. Well, that fire will burn that away. You see, and here's the beauty of a fire that stands up. If you've gone camping... And the kettle is going and the fire is burning. Suddenly the other people come out of their tents. Who knows what I'm talking about? They start joining the camping fire. They start sitting next to it. And suddenly no one is even worried about brushing their teeth now because we're camping. We're going to get to that later. But right now this fire is doing something to me. You see when the fire of the Holy Spirit starts burning inside of you. It brings people out of their tents. It draws people to the fire of the Holy Spirit. To God's Spirit. Jesus said, where I am lifted up, I will draw people to me. You know what happens if the fire of the Holy Spirit is in you? And you start carrying that? And people start coming to you? Do you know what happens to the spirit of rejection? Gone. You know what happens to inferiority right there? It's out the door. It's got no place. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit just comes and draws people and He blows. You see, they were standing there looking at this Jesus, son of Abba, versus Jesus, the Messiah. And the whole world is calling for that. See, the whole world, when Pierre de la Rue says it like this, spirit draws spirit. 
Birds of a feather flock together. A victim world will draw a victim Jesus. A Barabbas. There's no victory. A world that's got a spirit of give me, give me, give me will draw this one. Just give me freedom. Give me this. We'll draw that. We'll suck on it. We'll bring it closer. But if you understand the spirit that is inside of you, that spirit that is victorious, it draws on this Jesus, the Messiah. It draws. It, it hungers. It longs for more of that Jesus. See, that whole world called for that Jesus. They called for Barabbas. Let him free. We want him. We want a victim mentality. We want to be defeated, stuck in our problems, stuck in our hurts, stuck in our pain, stuck in our crutch identity. Because I'm like this, and you don't know where I come from, and my parents did this, and you know, we grew up so poor, and this was going on, and that was going no, 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 stuck in that place. Yeah, Jesus says, I want to set you free. I want to set you free. It's interesting, the Old Testament in Malachi. Now maybe we can page there together, Malachi 4. It's the last book in the Old Testament. The last chapter. The last verses. Verse 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. You see, we need to page to the New Testament in our lives. We need to move in our lives to a new place. We need to change our mind on how, where we live and how we live. Because the Old Testament is a conditional if you do, you'll get. If you do, you'll get. If you'll do, you'll get. If you do this, you will be blessed. If you do that, you will be blessed. Yet Genesis 1.27 says, God created man and woman, and He created them male and female. So He put sex and gender sorted. Male and female. He created man and woman, and He made man manly and woman female. He sorted that out from Genesis 1.27. Okay, so... I mean, that argument's there. It's been standing for ages. Make of it what you will. And then he did the following. This is the first thing God did after he made man and woman. The very first thing. He blessed them. You see, the fall of man activates curse. That's Old Testament. God created you blessed. Happy. The Amplified says, happy, prosperous, and to be envied. You are blessed. Not because of the nice car, and a lot of groceries, nani clothes, nice tie. That's not why you're blessed. You are created blessed. You're, that's the condition. Oh, please pray for me. Just bless me. Well, just go read what God says. You are. And then you look at Matthew 5. And Jesus is about to talk. Listen to what he says on the mount. Verse 2. And then he opened his mouth and taught them saying, Blessed. Blessed. You see, the Judas of this world, the Jesus, the Rabbis, son of Abba, there's no blessing. There's no blessing here. There's just victim mentality. This Jesus blesses. He's a life-giving force. The Bible says Adam was a living spirit, but the second Adam, Jesus, is a life-giving spirit. He gives life. So whatever area is dead, whatever area is hurt, whatever area is rejection, whatever there is doubt, maybe you, you I don't have all that faith. You don't need all that faith. You just need to know that this Jesus will take that little smoldering fire blow into it if you would receive him if you would receive him and many many people say I will receive Jesus and then they put the butt they put the conditions down 
I, but I, I need to, you, but you must understand this is the way I am. That they put it in there. You need to receive him unconditionally for who he is. He will never force himself. I want you to get this. If you are going to argue with him, you are only arguing with yourself. Because he doesn't, he, the, the Spirit of God is not an arguing spirit. He's the Spirit of peace. You can't be the Spirit of peace and argue. Does it make sense? You can't be that, he, the Spirit of peace. He, the, you are arguing and fighting with your own convictions to get in line. And it's this victim here that doesn't want to submit to this victim here. And I want, to, I want you to see the picture. When Barabbas is standing there and Jesus is standing on the one side, what is Jesus' heart towards him? Oh, you filthy criminal, you sinner, look at you. The church can never represent a Jesus like that when we deal with sinners, when we deal with hurting people, when we deal with a lost world. Oh, look at those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, we can pray, but we might probably have to pray on an alias. Jesus says, give me your sin. There's an English saying that I believe is important for this morning. Maybe if you haven't heard it, or you've heard it, write it down. There goes I, but for the grace of God. Because the salvation of the Lord is not because of my merit. It's the grace of God. It's the goodness of God. It's the kindness of God. It's the mercy of God on my life. He says, come. I know what you did last night. I know what you did yesterday. I know what you did then. I know your pain. I know your inferiority. I know your Achilles heel. I know you're notorious. Come. 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 You know where this starts? Where you start understanding the heart of Jesus? I want you to listen carefully. Tomorrow morning when you look in the mirror, if you want to know if you carry the heart of God, are you kind and merciful to that person in the mirror? Or are you still scrutinizing him or her? Still beating that one that looks back to you from the mirror? Still not accepting that one that looks back from the mirror? Look at your hair, look at your wrinkles, your ugly nose, whatever is the thing that you then you don't understand. Because this Jesus never does that. He never does that. He looks at you and says, Emma, I made you of my hands. I formed you. I shaped you in your mother's womb. Exactly the way I want you. You're perfect to me. You're be you exactly what I want and I've made you for a purpose to use you that's the spirit of God how can you be gracious to your neighbor if you cannot be gracious to yourself love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor the way you love yourself so if you're busy beating up on you, what are you going to do to your neighbor? If you're busy, busy criticizing you, what are you going to do to your neighbor? If you're looking for the faults in you the whole time, that's exactly what you're going to do to your neighbor. That is calling this guy into your life. It's calling Barabbas into your life. 
That's why the world says, but aren't we all children of God? Barabbas, son of Abba. Aren't we all? Yeah, yes, we are all. We're all. But we're all not the adopted children of God. When we say 1 John 12, or John 1 12, that says, as many as received Jesus, to him they gave the right to be called the children of God. This Jesus doesn't look at you and criticize you and find your faults. He says, I paid the price for it. I want to blow life into you. I want to blow life into you. Skulk, why don't you just put up some soft music for us? Where you sit, would you just please close your eyes? I just want to flow with the Holy Spirit if you guys would allow me just to, to do what I feel the Lord is saying I must do. I'm just going to pray. And if you can have your hands open like you're receiving something, that might be good. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. Holy Spirit, that you are here this morning. And your word says your anointing breaks yokes. Your anointing sets people free. Jesus, you said you didn't come to judge this world, but to save it to save us, to redeem us, to bind up our broken hearts. And there where we have fallen, there where we have become like notorious Barabbas, you have got pity. You stand and cry outside of Jerusalem, Lord. Your heart breaks for your people. Lord, this morning, some of us are hurting more than others. Oh, but all of us are dealing with something, struggling with something in our lives. And you paid the price for that, Lord. You took it on the cross. Lord, your word says that you will not break a bended reed or put out a smoking fire. Holy Spirit, would you please, sir, as we sit here this morning, come and blow your fire. Where there's rejection, that it will lead where there is inferiority. They will leave, Lord, over self-consciousness. That we just leave. Where there is heartache. Father, they would leave right now. Maybe there is issues of abandonment, Lord. Maybe some of us sit with pride, Lord. We think we're better. We th Maybe there's some frustration in Lord because we've not achieved what we want to. Maybe there's anxiety and fear of failure, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And that would leave Holy Spirit, your presence, your presence, Lord, your love right now. Your love that drives fear away, that drives any form of torment away. Your love that turns our heart of stone into a heart of flesh. Our deep cries out this morning. Abba, Father, come.
Come, Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come do your work. The deep cries out to deep. Fill us, Lord. Set this fire. Blow, Holy Spirit. Blow, Holy Spirit. Blow over this smoking fires, Lord. And even if we are burning, Lord, we want to burn more. Set us alight. Whatever's holding back, melt that off, Lord. Melt off whatever the chains that are holding our people back. Holding us back. Thank you for your love. Lord, Lord, showing me these people that just, you got an empty love tank. Your love is, it just feels like you're scraping metal on metal. Romans 5 says, God pours out his love in our hearts of the Holy Spirit. If you feel like metal on metal this morning, just open up your heart. Say, come Holy Spirit. Come pour out your love. I receive. I receive your love. I receive your unconditional love. I receive your washing clean love. I receive your acceptance love. I just receive you. It's where you are. Just receive. Just in your mind, just say, Lord, I receive. Maybe you want to whisper. Just, Lord, I receive. Thank you for filling me now with your love, for pouring your love on me. Pouring more of your love on me. It doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter how notorious I am. It doesn't matter, Lord, if the if the dark world knows me. It doesn't matter if everybody in the pub knows me. It doesn't matter if, if the underground knows me. Your love, Lord, just pour out. Watch out. Where can I hide? Where can I hide? David writes. Even though I make my bed in hell, there the Lord is. He is wherever, everywhere. It doesn't matter how low you are this morning. Doesn't matter how high you are this morning. There's more. There's more of His love. Jesus, the Christ, the Anointed One, is here this morning to anoint you, to put His stamp on you, His stamp of approval. I love you. I love you, says the Lord. I love you. He says, what mother is there that will throw her child away? Yet I will not abandon you. I will hold you in my right hand. And no one will pluck you out of it. And nothing will separate. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see tis great that for I don't know the rest of the words my heart to fear and grim mm-hmm. I raise that my, my, that 
Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. We exalt you for the work you are doing right now, Lord. For the freedom that you are bringing right now. We exalt you, God. Why don't you just keep your hands open and I'll bless you this morning. I'll bless you this morning with the presence. The presence of the Holy Spirit that will accompany you. Day in and day out. That will lead you. With a pillar of fire. And a cloud by day. It will provide manna from heaven for you. It will feed your soul. I bless you. Being surrounded by his hands. I bless you with Jesus called the Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's go drink some coffee. God bless you.